In uh, early November, my wife Ann and I went on a trip out to Colorado. Spent 10 days on the road and out in Colorado just uh, enjoying the sights, getting to spend some time just the two of us together, um, but not here in our home in Algoma. While we were out there, we spent part of the time down in the Colorado Springs area, part of the time out in the, uh, around Glenwood Springs in the west central part of the state. While we are in the Colorado Springs area, we decided to go to Pikes Peak and uh, we pulled up to the ranger station and the ranger said, uh, do you know that your car is smoking? Uh, no, we didn't. So we decided not to go try Pikes Peak. We went sightseeing other places and really enjoyed ourselves. Just enjoyed God's creation while we were out there. So beautiful. So then we spent some time, uh, we spent part of a day in Denver and then we uh, traveled out to the Glenwood Springs area to a town called Newcastle. We left Newcastle at 6 a.m. and pulled into Cedar Rapids, Iowa at 10 p.m. Central Time. Other than that one little incident at Pikes Peak, the car was working fine. We got to Cedar Rapids. We spent a couple of days there just recuperating a little bit. Final day, we drove up to my brother's in Lancaster, which is in the southwest part of Wisconsin. Spent a few hours with them. As we were leaving their house and accelerating up the road, the car started to wobble. And it would wobble whenever I was accelerating. If I let off the gas, it wouldn't wobble. Once I got up to speed, it wouldn't wobble. But it wobbled worse the longer we were driving. And so I basically started praying. God, we are so tired of this trip. Please just get us home. The car can die and I'll bury it tomorrow. Please just get us home tonight. I didn't use those words, but <laughs> please, please help us to get home. It did get progressively worse the whole way home. And Ann was pretty worried about it. I was really worried about it. I didn't know what was going on. Got home, all safe. Got back to work the next day and got the car in a couple of days later for the my mechanic to take a look at it. And he called me up within 30 minutes of me dropping the car off saying, what did you do to this car? And told him the story of the trip. And he said, there's no reason that this car should even be drivable. Both parts of the front axle are broken. He goes, I don't know how this car made it back to, to Algoma. And I got to admit, there's only one way this car made it back to Algoma, and that was God providing the rest of the journey, keeping the car on the road. My whole point in all of this is, is that some people don't believe in the power of prayer. And some people don't think that God answers prayers. Um, but I've seen it firsthand. Th this is just one example of God answering prayers in, in, in an incredible, totally uh, amazing way that we can't understand. So really, to, to me, it doesn't matter how small the request is, how big the request is. Bring your request to God. Let Him take care of it. My dad used to say all the time, God always answers prayer. It's either yes, no, or not yet. But He'll always answer your prayers. And that's it.